The MSI Claw is the newest competitor to the Steam Deck, and it's probably the most unique one so far. The thing that really separates the Claw from the rest is the fact that it uses an Intel chipset. It can come with either an Intel Core Ultra 5 or 7, which, by the way, in my opinion, is so much worse than their old naming scheme. But that aside, with them using Intel, that comes with Intel's all-new Arc graphics. Which, if you've seen how the desktop art graphic solutions have been for Intel, this could either be a really good thing or a very bad thing for this device. Well, all that being said, how does it stack up against the tried and true value king that is the Steam Deck? The MSI Claw's price starts at $699 for the Core Ultra 5 model. With that comes with 512 gigabytes of storage, you'll need to spend 50 bucks more to get the Core Ultra 7 model, or $100 more at $800 for the faster processor and double the storage. Which that is actually a similar price that you would spend back in the day for something like the Legion Go, which back in the day was literally like six, seven months ago. I would anticipate the price of these devices going way down as they get older. Like the Ally and the Legion Go can be had at times cheaper than some models of Steam Deck. So it's only really a matter of time, may give it a few months, maybe a sale to go past, and these things will start going for way cheaper. But that still remains to be seen whether or not it would be even worth it to buy these things, so let's continue. The Claw has a 7 inch 1080p screen at 120Hz, and that display does not support variable refresh rate, which at this price does sting a bit to not have. The overall look of the Claw is very gamery, and some people might like that, but for me personally, I just didn't really like it. It's super just kind of gaudy to look at. I just think it's kind of an ugly device, but that's just me personally. I don't even have a lot of RGB in my gaming PC. I went all black, just black obelisk of a PC. So if your tastes don't match that and you really like that gamery aesthetic, you'll love this device. But just for me personally, it was just too much. The overall port selection for this device is very similar to something like the Ally having just a USB-C port, micro SD card slot, but something that really separates this device from the Ally is the sheer fact that this device has Thunderbolt 4, which is something that none of these other devices have. The Ally only has USB 3.2 Gen 2, and it has separately the XG mobile connector, basically their proprietary connector for external GPUs. It allows them to have more PCIe lanes to have a more fully featured card, but that just causes it to be very expensive for the average gamer. Using Thunderbolt 4, while not a cheap solution, still allows gamers to have a greater degree of flexibility in what docks they use and how much they are willing to spend. And it doesn't lock you into a proprietary standard that ASUS might drop in a few years or just drop at a whim. If you stick with a Thunderbolt dock for an external GPU, you'll be able to use it on your laptop, a, a thin client desktop. Whatever supports Thunderbolt 4 would support uh, this external GPU dock that you would buy for the claw. Definitely makes a lot more sense for people who replace their laptops or desktop with these handhelds. The speakers aren't too great, which is disappointing, like I said, for such an expensive device you would kind of expect better speakers. The Steam Deck sounds amazing, the Ally is pretty good, the Legion Go sounds phenomenal. All these devices have great speakers and they really need to to overpower how loud some of their fans are. And unfortunately, the Claw just can't. I'm no audiophile, I used to use a lot of Beats and I still use my AirPods every day, but golly, these speakers just are only at okay at best, and once you start increasing the volume, there's just quite a bit of distortion. It could be that I got a bad sample. That's just the experience I had. If that is the case, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear if that my device is the exception, not what everybody else has had experienced, which would be incredibly disappointing. The last feature of this device we're gonna be talking about is 
the Wi-Fi 7 chip. It's really cool to see this device come with Wi-Fi 7, and it's very awesome to see this being one of the first devices to do so. But that was never a real big part of this device for me. It has really fast Wi-Fi, and all these other devices had incredibly little fast Wi-Fi, and it, it's neat, but I would have liked to see them maybe put like Wi-Fi 6C in this and to have variable refresh around the display. Not a big deal, but it's it's cool to see Wi-Fi 7, but it's, I would just like to see the effort put somewhere else. Performance is weird. The performance of the claw is inconsistent at best. I was able to run Elden Ring at 1080p high, really stuttery, a 30 FPS all the way down to 15, and it's connected to power. Unplugging from power, the stuttering and slowdown got worse, slipped even further down to low teens in terms of FPS. And you might think, oh, that's 10 high, just dropped to low. It was still not great of an experience. And comparing that to something like the Z1 Extreme Equipped Ally, which can be had for almost half of the price if you're a savvy shopper, can provide an experience orders of magnitude better. No game I encounter on the Ally wouldn't boot. Every game posted, and ran fantastically, providing, in specifically Elden Ring, a 60 to 50 FPS average 1080p high unplugged. And seeing the claw not be able to achieve even half of that steadily was frustrating. And then when I went to go try Helldivers, it wouldn't even open, which is insane to me. Because this device can cost all the way up to $800. You should expect more out of a device when you're paying that much for it. I'll have a separate, more dedicated video on the overall performance characteristics of the claw for later this week, but it is incredibly disappointing. The Steam Deck is well-trotted territory for us. I've made multiple videos, some might say a lot of videos, talking about the Steam Deck and this performance. I use Windows on my Steam Deck, so that might complicate things for some people. But overall, the Steam Deck, compared to the Claw, offers a very compelling performance. A lot of games I tested ran perfectly on the Steam Deck. Even in Windows, it ran phenomenally. I couldn't get the Claw to boot some games, as I mentioned. I tried playing the Arkham Knight games, just wouldn't work. Or the controls wouldn't work, it would be stuttering, crash literally a myriad of issues for the claw but for the steam deck oh you want to play this game just open it boom there you go i would say the few advantages that the claw has over the steam deck the 120 hertz refresh rate that is awesome the steam deck max on the oled has 90 hertz which still nice but 120 hertz is amazing but the screen just doesn't really compare to the oled it's disappointing but what are you gonna do? It's an OLED. It's kind of hard to beat an OLED. Overall, the Steam Deck offers just so much better overall, more consistent performance, and overall has just a better overall experience. I even use Windows on my Steam Deck, a very unoptimized mess of a way to play on your Steam Deck, but it was still orders of magnitude better. Just the consistency the overall just build quality, the actual experience playing the games was far less of a headache. The Claw did have slightly better battery life, but it didn't really matter at the end of the day. Just because the performance you were getting just simply wasn't worth it. Spending upwards of $500 more than the price of a Steam Deck, that is just killer. And the price will go down with time just like the Ally and the Legion Go. And those have become amazing budget options. And not to mention that, like I've said before, the Ally can be had for about 350 bucks if you're real thrifty, 450 if you're going like Best Buy open box. So I feel like comparing that to the Claw is just mean. The Claw just is an unoptimized piece of technology. It has so much potential and it can be really amazing when it works. But it just doesn't work consistently enough for me to ever realistically recommend it to anybody. And it does poorly in comparisons with other devices. 
So I recommend the Steam Deck over the claw, hands down, without a doubt, recommending the Steam Deck over the claw. Save yourself some money, buy a Steam Deck, buy the yourself a dock, and a handful of games. You would be much better spending your money that way than buying a claw. Unless the claw offers a feature specifically that you would take advantage of, like the Thunderbolt 4 port for having a desktop gaming solution and then only playing light games on the go, I simply don't see any world where the claw makes sense over the Steam Deck. If those are the two devices you're comparing, buy the Steam Deck. I would love to hear what you guys think down below. Would you buy a Steam Deck or the claw or would you be buying a claw or the Steam Deck? I would love to hear why you would do so. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. All the other social media garbage down below. And last but not least, have a wonderful day.